Starsky and Hutch were really cool to us because they got all the girls. I'm not guilty. I sure wouldn't mind being arrested by one of you two officers. They got all the action. What? Off me! And they had a cool car. Back then, the only emotion men were allowed to express was anger. Why don't you just get out? Tempo, tempo, tempo. And then all of a sudden, along come two men that were very, very close. Because we got something that Ferguson doesn't have, huh? What's that? Each other. Lucky and it was before the bro hug was invented, you know, the, you know, with the... They would take a bullet for one another. They, they had each other's backs. Never pick on a man's partner. It was amazing. It was never seen before. I remember the producer telling us that during their auditions, and they looked at each other and they said, oh my, we have something here. On this episode of Cozy TV Tributes, superfans come together to celebrate David Soul and Paul Michael Glazer, the stars of Starsky and Hutch. Hey, Starsky. Hmm? I'm beginning to think that everybody in this town is crazy, except you and me. Funny. I was beginning to have serious doubts about you. We'll hear how they inspired lives. They're part of the continuity of my life the special relationship they had with each other. When there's a friendship that is so dear and so special, it, it's something that we all hope to have in our lives, and we want to share a little bit in the, in the magic. What it was like to be a part of the show. But I loved being part of Starsky and Hutch. He was so gorgeous, how could you not? <laughs> and everything that continues to make the show special. They're co-workers, but they're best friends. And that's what the show is really all about, is love. When Starsky and Hutch premiered in 1975, it was clear this was a new kind of show featuring a new kind of hero. Hutch! I was 17 years old. Uh, junior in high school, and I watched the pilot, and I knew that that was going to be a show that I just loved. A girl that I was going out with at the time went out and bought me one of the little die-cast Starsky and Hutch cars, and I still have that car to this day. I was probably about 14 years old, and I had a really, really good friend named Steve who was blonde, and I had uh, dark curly hair, and we were awkward teenagers not sure where we kind of fit in in the world. And then the show comes on and we saw it and we said, I said, dude, that's us. If we were cool, that would be us. I uh, actually thought it was just another testosterone filled cop show. The cops coming in through the front door give the police a bad name. Oh, what will my customers think? Got a minute hug. But that wasn't the case. Viewers were quickly drawn to the inventive, well-written episodes and the groundbreaking relationship between Starsky and Hutch. And then all of a sudden along come two men that were compassionate and they would cry for one another or cry for somebody else. It's gonna be okay. It was amazing, it was never seen before. They are great actors, but they also do have a great relationship in real life. And that came across on screen. If you watch television today, Starsky and Hutch are referred to almost constantly. The two of them just breathe life into these, uh, what could have been cardboard characters. Oh, so funny. You wanted me to send up for lunch or? You're gonna come down from there, huh? The show was a runaway hit, making Paul Michael Glazer and David Soul overnight stars. To this day, superfans still have their favorites. I um, was a Hutch fan the second I saw him on screen. He was just freaking beautiful. He was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen on television. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? What's your size? Not when I'm on duty. He could be very gentle, very gentle. He's tending to his plants, and he's playing the piano, and he's singing and the guitar. And yet he had a, a fierceness. He, one minute, was a tough macho cop. Give me a reason. Who could knock you down with a, with a look. And Starsky wore his heart on his sleeve, his emotions on his sleeve. And he, he could be boisterous and funny, and he could turn around and be, you know, just totally grief-stricken or, or frantic. I gotta make a report. No report. They both had their passions. That's a great breakfast. Root beer and cold pizza. 
It's an all-American breakfast. I still live by Starsky's rule that root beer and cold pizza is the all-American breakfast. Me, I take a lot of vitamin E and wheat chair. Paul Michael Glazer as Starsky was so cool and could get any girl. I said, I want to be like that guy. I want to talk like that guy with the Boston accent. Hey, Hutch, my car. Hey, Hutch. I would think that was probably a Starsky fan because I love the car and he loved the car on the TV show. You hear that? Yeah, it's an engine. We'll rev it up, get the feel of it. I want to walk like him. I want to, you know, run like him. I want to wear the same pinky ring. When I was this girl, I was a Starsky girl. I loved the curly hair and the attitude and the Starsky strut. I mean, I was insane. I mean, I, I looked all over town for the proper bracelet, for the proper watch band. I created a Starsky sandwich when I was a kid. I really did, at that point, believe I was Starsky. You stop drooling in the food. I'm hungry. You're embarrassing. What I loved most about Starsky was Hutch. And what I loved most about Hutch was Starsky because they shared the same heart. And there was no way I could ever split that heart in half and choose between them. Next, Cozy TV superfans remember special episodes of Starsky and Hutch that resonate with them to this day. They taught a lot about friendship and about loyalty. This was a cowboy movie. I give you my boots. And later, we'll meet their co-stars. What are you doing? Engaging in an American free enterprise system. A lot of things they weren't ready for with Starsky and Hutch. They touching drugs, touching a whole lot of stuff. When the Cozy TV tribute to David Soul and Paul Michael Glazer continues. We're back with the Cozy TV tribute to David Soul and Paul Michael Glazer. We asked our Cozy TV superfans what makes Starsky and Hutch such a special show. It's one of these flakes you're calling stupid. The creepy looking one. Gotta be more specific. Starsky and Hutch took the buddy concept way to the nth degree. These guys were not only partners and worked together, they were good friends and they cared for each other deeply. It's so intimate that I feel like I'm intruding when I watch it. To find a friend that you can count on like that, this guy's gonna take a bullet for me. <laughs> you know, I don't know, I, I have friends that I love dearly. I'm not sure they would do that. There were some other episodes that were basic, you know, find the bad guy or whatever, but there was a lot of shows regarding touchy topics like drug addiction and, and rape. OD, we string them out. I mean, they told us to tone it down. They wanted more whimsical kind of stuff. And so we, we snuck in with them with a lot of things they weren't ready for with Starsky and Hutch. I mean, touching drugs, touching a whole lot of stuff. My very favorite one, it's called The Fix. A drug dealer mobster wanted information from him about a young lady that he was helping hide. You got one more chance. Where is she? So they tied him down and injected him with drugs. There you go, cop. First mile on a long, long trip. And I was shocked. Isn't that that detective? Yeah, Hutchinson. There's a missing officer out on him. Call it in. He just helped him through the whole withdrawal and was just very eye-opening for me. He's hugging him, and they're in bed together, and he's holding him, and he's you know, nursing him back to health. And I'd never seen two men act like that on television, especially in the 70s. Come on, hold on. I suppose I've had my favorites, and I'd have to say a coffin for Starsky. You have 24 hours to live, pig. Count him. Hutch was on a time frame to save his life before um, Starsky died from a poison. Hutch. Him and this slow demise of Starsky, and it was it was tragic. Uh, uh, Starsky. Hey, hey. Easy, easy. Easy. My favorite episode was called Murder on Stage 17. Which brings us to you two. Now, you're going undercover as stuntmen on Mr. Hanson's picture. You mean we're going to be actors? So sitting in Aberdeen, South Dakota at the age of 15, watching this, watching how movies and TV shows are made with the cameras and the camera crew and the makeup guys and the stunt guys, that element attracted me right away. Wrong! Me. And it was, it was a brilliant manipulation of some guy who, who could have easily just shot his hostage. I'll shoot her. They turned their backs on me. They didn't all turn their backs on you, Wally. Ruth Willoughby didn't. Ruth? My sister? Sorry. <laughs> the episode, The Plague, 
kind of show their relationship. Because Hutch got the plague. We got thousands of lives in danger, including a cops in a hospital. And Starsky's frantically trying to look for a cure. Hutch, yeah. I'm going to find Calendar. I'll do it, buddy, because I plan to be around for 148 years. But there was one special scene where Starsky visited Hutch, and Starsky has the mask over his face. So you can't see from here down, but the emotion in his eyes to show the feelings that they conveyed to each other. It was very powerful. Get out of here. They loved one another. And that's what makes them special. Hey buddy, I'm here. I'm here. When we come back, what was it like to work on the show with David and Paul? Paul and David were fantastic to work with. They were like big brothers to me. We'll talk to two of their co-stars. And what about that co-star with all the muscle? The super fans remember that super car, the Gran Torino, on the Cozy TV tribute to David Soul and Paul Michael Glazer. We're back with the Cozy TV tribute to David Soul and Paul Michael Glazer. When Starsky and Hutch superfans watch the show today, they're transported right back to the time they first discovered it. I had a really, really good friend named Steve. And then the show comes on, and we saw it, and we said, I said, dude, that's us. If we were cool, that would be us. That's what we would do. And we started dressing like them, walking like them, talking like them. They started calling us Starsky and Hutch in school. And uh, we just had the greatest time being the Aberdeen, South Dakota version of Starsky and Hutch. I would opt to go up into my bedroom and watch on a little black and white set with a tape recorder up to the <laughs> up to the speaker and listen to them every night before going to bed over and over and over again. The show's co-stars have the same instant connection. Her name's uh, Abigail Crabtree. Abigail Crabtree? Oh. She's a friend of old lady McMillan's hutch. You gotta help me. I'm Annie Foster. I played Abigail Crabtree, a.k.a. Abby, um, David Soul, Hutch's girlfriend on the show. Oh, Captain, if you see Detective Starsky, would you tell him that I'm taking care of uh, Miss Crabtree here? Uh, I was in New York, hungry actor in New York, and my agent gets a call that I was recommended by Barry Shear, who was directing the pilot for Starsky and Hutch. And there was this character called Huggy Bear that he thought I was right for. Hey, Huggy. You still want to lead on those two hikes? Yeah, what you got? Antonio is a talented actor, and he embraced that role, and he made it his own. You know what they say, Huggy Bears is where the elite meet and come to greet. It was racially um, uh, uplifting to a lot of people who, who didn't see blacks on television. And then I brought a street element to it. He had to survive in a hostile world. And they used to use Huggy Bear as their little snitch. He roused his Big Benny yesterday. Where is he? Hey, you want me to blow the whistle on Big Benny just like that? I worked for the city of Camden Police Department. And I had my little snitches out on the streets that used to tell me where different things were going on. So it was kind of the same, you know. I used to call them my, my Huggy Bears. Huggy is supposed to be an informer, but he's not. He's the third rail for them. I mean, he is there kind of manipulating things in the background. He's their go-to guy. I think he's a fabulous part of the program. Huggy Bear makes you smile just saying the name because the word hug is in it. And Bear, and who doesn't like either? Huggy Bear had his funny moments, but then there were some, a lot of serious moments too. Careful, Mean Joe Green is a pussycat compared to this Huggy Bear. You have a certain shelf life on the street of doing that, and then either you go into the witness protection, you know, or you succumb to, you know, the street. When the pilot came on in 1975, I was immediately attracted to the car. Ford put out 1,000 or so limited edition Starsky and Hutch Torinos. And one guy in Aberdeen, South Dakota had one. And I'd say about 15 years ago, I finally found one that I still own and restored it, had it restored. I know about a guy that owned two of the originals from the TV series. But he said, you'll be the first phone call when I decide to sell them. 
about seven or eight years ago, he called me up. So me and my buddy took a road trip the next morning. I mean, with that tuned suspension, that trick motor, and the four fives and the rear end. Starsky. It's red. You have to suspend disbelief. They're undercover cops in a red car. At some point, you have to say, well, that's kind of silly. It's candy apple red. What you got? Just the way Starsky used to talk about the car when he drove it. He actually loved the car. There was a lot of freedom. It was, it was a hopeful time in some ways. You have the right to remain silent. I, I got a right to remain alive, you mean? And Paul said that his driving was so awful that they eventually, after so many wrecks, just put him on a trailer and said, no, you cannot drive this car anymore. You have the right to speak with an attorney. Is that enough? Hey, hey, 35 miles an hour, that's the speed limit. 35, do you hear me? This happens all the time when I drive the Torino around. People will drive by and go, hey, Starsky and Hutch, woo, Starsky and Hutch. And I'm like, beep, beep, yeah. Rrr. But every time I get a couple more dollars saved up, for some reason, another Torino pops up and I buy that. So, I mean, I have five right now. Starsky and Hutch were really cool to us because they got all the girls, they got all the action, they had a cool car. They just acted uh, and talked and walked very cool. We didn't realize kind of what was going on at that time, but everybody had a great time. Paul and David were fantastic to work with. I think we live, let's say athletes live for, they don't live to play the game so much. They really live for, for the locker room. They live for the practice. They live for the relationships around behind the camera, the scenes, the, the characters and all that stuff. When we all were together, we all were part of that survival package. And that's what I think one of the reasons it made it such a great show. The camaraderie, the professionalism, the excitement. They were like big brothers to me. So it was, it was fun to be a part of that. That's right. When we come back, some final thoughts on why Starsky and Hutch has meant so much to so many. Please, please. It's got to be the most impact and the most powerful statement in the 54 years that I've been doing this. As the Cozy TV tribute to David Soule and Paul Michael Glazer continues. We're back with the Cozy TV tribute to David Soule and Paul Michael Glazer. Whether it's years ago or just a few months past, when fans meet David Soule and Paul Michael Glazer, the reaction is always the same. I was a little giddy because I was a teenager, but um, he was very lovely and gracious, and it was more fun the next day in school to go, I met Stasky, you know. Actually, I remember talking to David at breakfast once, and I said, I never in a million years thought I'd be sitting across from you. At, at breakfast, you know, ever. I mean, this is Hutch. I was a young girl who used to hang them on my wall and dreamed about meeting him. And, and all these years later, it's a comfortable feeling meeting them, like, like old friends. We've followed their careers, their lives, and, and wished them well. I was in my kitchen cooking, and I was watching the television from across the room. This was like three years ago. And I watch it, and I'm like, this is fascinating. It sparked some memory about the country at the time. So here I launch in at 57. Then I wanted to watch it all the time. <laughs> I'm very clear in my mind that when I meet the men, I'm not meeting the characters. For me, Starsky and Hutch will always be 35. They'll always be perfect in their imperfection. I just don't believe it's Sunday. Why? You don't mean you'd rather be relaxing poolside with a blonde lovely than chasing down vicious criminals and murderers? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Given that my background is, is a therapist, I guess I'm surprised at, at how deep it, it pulls at me. Yes, yes, I am surprised about that. And how it doesn't stop, it doesn't stop pulling at me, it just doesn't. Watching that show put me on a track to where I am today, for sure and gave me goals and you know with law enforcement and working on you know cars and things like that and it was before the bro hug was invented you know the you know with the it kind of gave me permission to treat another male as as a bro and there are no bros better than starsky and hutch
Our cozy superfans all agree the actors and show influenced their lives. They say the magic is the chemistry between the two. The looks they used to give each other, the banter. They used to weave it into the storyline, and but you always knew I wasn't really watching the show for the plot. I was watching the show for what happened to the, to the two guys together. Have a fellowship that's really, really special. It has nothing to do with politics and doesn't do all that stuff, but there's something about the giving spirit. They're not afraid to hug each other. They're not afraid to express affection. There's a lot of teasing that goes on between them. Anybody ever tell you you got a terrific way with women? It wasn't about the car they drove or the clothes they wore or, or how they physically looked. It was their friendship and how they responded to each other and how they cared about each other on and off screen. Stay where you are. I don't care what your business is here tonight. I'm going over to my partner. Not just the magic between them. You, you can have lifetime friends, which is wonderful, but the magic of people that are still coming to see them. And I think that's part of the fascination for the fans, and that's what they want to see. It's not necessarily that they want to see Starsky and Hutch. As long as these guys are in the room together, that's, that's the magic. Love never dies. And that's what the show is really all about, is love. The love of the people that Starsky and Hutch are protecting, and the love between uh, Starsky and Hutch, and just the love of their job, and the love of that amazing car. Mm.